JMC 6000 here, and in the garage of the JMC, or the JMC garage rather, I have a 2019 Ford Flex. Now, I'm not going to do a review on this car. That's not what this video is about. In fact, the video is about what's underneath the hood of this Ford Flex. Now, this Ford Flex is a 2019 with 81,000 miles on it, on the original engine, original transmission. Of course, you wouldn't think anything less. It has under 100, but this is not the EcoBoost. In fact, let me show you what's going on underneath the hood of this particular Ford Flex and something, could it be damaging? Something that you can avoid as a consumer when you're looking at some of these vehicles. So let's go find out. As I go and pop the hood. Some have described this as a fatal flaw of this particular engine. As soon as I find the there it is. Now, underneath this dirty hood, we have the 3.5 liter Duratec V6. Now, this particular V6 has been around since 2011. Um, in fact, it actually goes beyond that, but this latest iteration, at least what's underneath the hood of this flex, has been around since 2011. It's a twin independent variable cam timing. So you've got independent variable cam timing on both the intake and the exhaust. Got like thunderstorms happening out here. Uh, intake and exhaust. And then you also have, on this particular engine, it's only port injected, it's not direct injected. But that's not really the fatal flaw of this engine. In fact, some had described this engine as stay away from because there's this one particular issue that is on the transversely mounted Doratec V6s, and I'm about to explain to you why that is. Now on this particular engine, on most engines, for, you know, most of all, they have a water pump. On this particular engine, the water pump is actually driven off the timing chain. Now, if you get the Doratec V6, let's be in the F-150, in the Mustang, or even in the new Explorer, not the older Explorer, we're talking about 2020 newer Explorers that are regular longitudinally mounted, those Doratec V6s actually have an external water pump driven off the serpentine belt, like most engines are traditionally driven. This particular one is driven off the timing chain. If you want to come over here, son, where it's located is right in the center of the valley. And everything you see on top here would have to be removed. The motor mount would have to be disconnected. And many times, some people will drop the engine in order to get to the timing pump or get to the water pump because it's driven off the timing chain. Uh, I've seen some people actually be able to get to the water pump without taking out the engine, without, um, you know, actually dropping the engine. But what has to be removed is the intake, valve covers, the front timing cover, the motor mount, the serpentine belt that drives the air conditioner and the alternator, all to get to the timing chain of this engine to get to the water pump, which does sound like a lot of work. Now, here's the thing. Because it is driven by the timing chain, many people say stay away from this engine. When the water pump goes, it actually goes into the oil. And I want to say yes and no to that. Here's the reason. Ford actually designed this engine in, in conjunction with Mazda all the way back in 2007. The latest iteration that you see here in this car came out in 2011 in the generation of the Mustang and the F-150. It was a 3.7, uh, which is basically a bored out version of this particular engine. And then we had later iterations come out in the Explorer, in the Flex, in the Taurus. So this engine has been in a lot of vehicles, the 3.5, 3.7 Doratex. So it's also known internally in Ford as the Cyclone V6. Excuse the sound of nail guns in the background. Uh, my across the street neighbor is getting a new roof put on. Anyway, so a couple ways to prevent or at least mitigate the water pump issue. Number one, this particular car has 81,000 miles, which you want to do right here is the coolant overflow. Now, the only way to add coolant to this engine is through the overflow tank or through the pressurized overflow tank. Uh, this particular engine has pretty good coolant. Now, right around 60 to 80,000 miles, so basically, I believe this probably coolant is probably original. This coolant needs to be changed out. And how to do that is what you would do is take and make sure the engine is cool. You take off the pressure cap. And at the bottom of the radiator, there should be a petcock where you would actually drain out the coolant out of the radiator, which will eventually flow out of the pressure tank as long as this is open and all the coolant will come out of the radiator and out of the engine. And then you would 
put in new radiator fluid. That's number one way to help prolong the life of this water pump. Not many people do that, and they wonder why the water pump goes at 120, 130,000 miles. Well, you never flush the coolant. Put in fresh coolant right around 60 to 80,000 miles. So if you own one of these cars or think about owning one of these cars, and if you're in talks with getting one of these cars, maybe talk with the dealer you're discussing it with. Hey, have you guys done a coolant flush on this? Please, I want a coolant flush done because I want to prolong the life of the water pump. And it's like, well, we don't do that. Well then, move ahead, go look at something else, or at least somehow make sure you have a coolant flush done to this particular vehicle, especially with the amount of miles that are on it. That's number one, preventive maintenance. Number two, preventive maintenance, that so you want to do this vehicle, besides making sure the oil has been changed every 5,000 miles, is also always, always, always look at the how much coolant you have left and always keep an eye on it. So every time you get an oil change, in fact, maybe in between oil changes, always check the level of the coolant. If you start seeing the drop, you may have an issue. Now, what Ford has done with this water pump, knowing that it's driven off the timing chain, is that they actually provided a weep pole right on the side of the engine. Now, bear with me, I'm gonna get my flashlight real quick. This is like spur of the moment video, but I wanted to get this cover. So right on the side of the engine here, we kind of go into here, son. You see the alternator right there. Now right behind on the side of the alternator, there was a weep pole. And what you can do is you can look periodically at that weep pole to see if there's coolant leaking. On this particular water pump, it has two seals. The first seal that goes will actually start to show by water getting past that first seal and going into the weep hole. That's your first indication that the water pump is going. If you let it go and don't check the weep hole, or if you decide, oh yeah, I got plenty of coin, and, uh, but I see a little bit of drippage out, there's nothing to worry about, and if you continue to prolong, you know, after the first seal has been broken, it's gonna breach the second seal. Now, when you breach the second seal, that is the damage that occurs because once the second seal of the water pump has been breached, then water, or coolant rather, actually goes past that second seal, past the, the driven part of the water pump itself, driven off the timing chain, and then it goes into the engine oil. And then when you check the oil, the oil won't look like this. It'll look like a milkshake because that's what happens on coolant, mixes with the oil. There we go. So that's one of the things to look out for. I would not, one of the things I will say about the DoorTech engine, especially the 3.5, the 3.7, and also the 3.3 in the latest generation, um, is actually they're very stout, very good engines, and they produce a lot of power. I mean, this particular engine is 290 horsepower, 255 pound-feet of torque. Um, it's in the upper part of the RPM range, so you've got to rev it out to get to it. But they sound good, they produce a good bit of power, and they're super smooth. So, very good engines, but when you get one that's transversely mounted like that in this Ford Flex, that's something to pay attention to. Make sure, you know, if it has some miles on it, well, that's pretty awesome. If it has some miles on it, make sure you get the coolant flushed before you take the delivery of the vehicle. If it has any kind of, if it has 80,000 or above, talk them into doing a coolant flush, because I guarantee it hasn't been done. And then number two, make sure they keep an eye out for the weep hole. Keep an eye out for, to make sure those things are, are you know, looked after so you don't buy a problem. So you're not a month into vehicle purchase, all of a sudden you need a water pump because coolant wasn't flushed and they didn't decide to bother to check the weep hole and anything else and then all of a sudden it starts leaking out and you start getting the milkshake in the engine. All right, so there's ways to prolong the life of the water pump. Coolant flushes are primary ways to prolong the life and also, also make sure the oil changes are nice and kept up on 5,000 or less on these particular engines. And I'm gonna tell you right now, there's people out there that have never touched a water pump on these engines with 200,000 miles, 250,000 miles, still rocking the original water pump. Yeah, it's hard to believe, but it actually can happen. When you do the preventative maintenance on this engine, you can actually prolong the life of the water pump, even though it's driven by the timing chain. Now, what I wanna say before I close out this video is, is nobody talks about this, but everybody praises the Nissan VQ engine. Did you know that the VQ engine has a time and drain driven water pump as well? But John, you don't understand. You can get easy access by this little hole and, and you can kind of candidly with a chain back and be able to pull the water pump out. Yeah, but it's still driven off the time chain. There's still a chance that water can leak into the coolant. I've seen many VQ engines that have milkshake as well, but nobody talks about it because, oh, it's a highly praised VQ engine. We can't talk bad about that engine. 
Let me tell you something. I think this engine is better than the Nissan VQ engine, even though they both share a similar kind of fatal flaw, and that is the timing chain driven water pump. And many VQ engines don't have the access hole, and they're just as hard to change for the water pump as it is on this engine. Anyway, just a little bit of information. Thank you for joining me on this video. I wanted to talk about this 3.5 liter. I think it's an amazing engine, the Cyclone V6. One of my favorite V6s, not just because of the Ford. It actually is a really good V6. I would take this engine any day over the issues, the time machine issues, everything else that you see on the GM 3.6 liter. Ooh, just stay away from those engines altogether. Stay away. Anyway, I would love to take this engine over that engine any day of the week. In fact, that engine has more issues than there's timing change, but we won't go into that. Anyway, awesome engine, awesome V6. You do your preventative maintenance, and you can be certain that you probably won't have a water pump issue. And you know what to look for if you do. You know what to look for if you do have leaking coolant or coolant that goes out and everything else. Awesome. If you have any questions, comments, please drop them in the comments section. Love to hear about those. Love to know about those. I'm about ready uh, to go ahead and run this back up and shut my garage door before the storm gets any worse. Awesome. You guys have a blessed day. We'll see you in the next one.